Hey everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So we are going to be just well I am going to be kind of discussing about practical questions. I feel like I mean me personally anyway, I lose my marks from practi practical questions. From the types of practical questions they ask to like validity, reliability, accuracy, independent, dependent variable, control variable, control um what's your control experiment i lose i i lose my marks literally through my practical stuff and that is not going to happen and maybe you do lose your marks from practicals as well so this is going to be short and it's literally just on types of us understanding how to answer practical questions but not like the different types of practicals that will be in another individual video so hope you enjoy it and make sure to like and subscribe if you want more of this so let's go so the first thing we are going to look at is validity so in terms of whether an experiment is valid it's basically whether the experiment answers your original question thing that you are actually investigating and whether your results relate to what you are testing basically so basically kind of like whether your results are reliable whether they are true think val validity is the same thing as being it being true so whether what your experiments whether you, experiment you've done is actually kind of true and basically answers your original question yeah and to improve your validity of an experiment, you can do this by controlling more variables. And this excludes the independent and the dependent variable. So you can use the right equipment to measure the change and also to improve validity, you know, improve reliability and, and accuracy. So that's what you need to know. But um, the next thing we're going to look at is accuracy. So accuracy measures how close your results from the experiment is to the true and actual results. So to improve your accuracy, you can do more values that are close to the true value. That is exactly what examiners are actually looking for. They are looking for you to say, oh, do more values close to or oh, between these type of ranges. So for an example, so if the isotonic solution for, for potato cells is between um, 0.1 moles per decimeters cubed and 0.2 moles per decimeters cubed, then to improve the accuracy of your experiment, you should do more concentrations of, solution, of the solution between 0.1 decimeters cubed, uh, moles per decimeters cubed and 0.2 moles per decimeters cubed. Another way you can also do to improve your accuracy is to use more precise measuring equipment. That is another thing that you can do. Um, an example that I kind of put, you can also calibrate your measuring equipment, that which would um, reduce systematic error because systematic error would then affect your results. So for an example here, I says calibrate the colorimeter. If you don't know what a colorimeter I will, what is, um, I will, I'll kind of do it in another video. So stay tuned. Reliability. So an experiment being reliable means that it can just it can be reproduced by others. So to improve reliability, you should repeat the experiment at least three times and then calculate a mean value. Again. Examiners are literally whenever a question says, how can you improve your reliability? Literally just put repeat the experiment and then calculate a mean to so that you can calculate a mean value. Examiners will love that. They'll just be like, tick, tick, you're done. And the reason why you do this is to reduce the effects of random error. Another um, kind of a reason that you, Oh, no would you say reason oh <laughs> yeah would you anywho so improving the reliability of an experiment allows you to identify anomalous results that is an also another thing that you can put if a question asks oh um 
how can I improve? How can you improve the reliability of an experiment? And they say, oh, two points. Then the first thing is repeat to calculate a mean. And the second thing is so that you can identify anom anomalous results. Literally, if you write those two down, you'll get two marks and you'll get a tick tick. And yeah, you'll make yourself happy. So that'll be good. And you can also use more precise measuring equipment, just like how I said with accuracy, you can use better equipment with reliability. But to be honest, the um, repeating to find the mean and the identify anomalous results, those should be the top ones. Those should be the ones that you remember, especially the repeating one. Uncertainty. So this is all about what is what is the most inaccurate or uncertain part of the method. Therefore, to reduce uncertainty, you can do more accurate. You can use more accurate equipment or apparatus, whatever you like to say. Yeah. Percentage change. So one way that I remember percentage change is new minus old over old times by a hundred. So your new value take away your old value, all of your old value times by a hundred is equal to your percentage change. I they always they always ask that question like I they always ask that question to me and because I always remember that new minus old over old I'm always I'm on, I wouldn't say I'm always but most of the time I'm getting it right actually you know oh yeah I I think I'm always getting it right yeah yeah let's leave it at that dependent variables so the dependent variable is the one being measured in an experiment so when you are drawing a graph it is the y-axis that's the y-axis bit of the of the graph so for an example when you are measuring the rate of enzyme activity or the rate of reaction whatever you like to call it over a range of temperatures so 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 etc <laughs> And the dependent variable in this experiment is the rate of enzyme activity because that is what you're measuring. So pretty much it. So your what so the dependent variable is what you are measuring. So because you are measuring the rate of enzyme activity, that is the dependent variable. Therefore, when you are drawing a graph, that should be on the y-axis. And remember that because they could, the examiners could, I mean, the examples could ask you, oh, identify the dependent variable. So it is very important for you to know what a dependent variable is. So it makes it so much more easier for you to answer the question and just get over and done with. That's one easy mark that you can just gain so quickly. So it's very important, guys. The independent variable. So the independent variable is the one that you are changing. So this fact, this is the factor that you are testing in the experiment. You have control over the independent variable. So when drawing a graph, this is on the x axis. Remember, x axis is independent variable. Dependent variable is on the y axis. Always remember that. Get that ingrained in your head. So when also when drawing a table, this is in the first column, so the one to your left. So yeah, to the left, yeah, the first column basically. So you guys remember. So just like the other ex the example that I said before, so when measuring the rate of enzyme activity over a range of temperatures, the independent variable is obviously the temperature because that is what you are changing. That is what you are testing. If you get what I mean. Control variable. So the control variable is the one that is kept the same slash constant during the experiment. So if the control variable is not kept the same, then that will invalidate your results because these control variables can affect your results. So basically, yeah, it will invalidate your results if you do not control those variables. <laughs> Again, just like the example, so when measuring the rate of enzyme activity over a range of temperatures, the control variables are pH, enzyme concentration, 
and substrate concentration. And these factors can affect the rate of enzyme activity if not kept constant, leading to invalid results. Controlled experiment. So this is a group in the experiment that is exposed to the same condition as the group that is being experimented, but just without the independent variable. Remember that control variable and controlled experiment are two different things. Do not get them mixed up. Whenever they say, oh, what is the control variable? is not the same as a controlled experiment. Please remember that, <laughs> please remember that, please. And the controlled experiment isolates the effect of the independent variable on the experiment. So it kind of provides a comparison and it can help rule out alternative other explanations of the, exper of the experimental results. So in other words, it just helps, it helps to identify any other factors that could affects the, the experimental results, the results that you get during your experiment. So, the example, so when measuring the rate of enzyme activity, the, the, the controlled variable would be maybe the rate of enzyme activity when temperature is kept constant, when there's no change in temperature. If you, do you get me? I think you do. All right. <laughs> describe. When being told to describe, oh my gosh, everyone say this with me. When being told to describe something, never explain. Just say what you see. Honestly, just say what you see. If you say what you see, like say what you see like i've got a hand sanitizer right here and if i had to describe my hand sanitizer right here i would say it's a bottle it's a, it says hand gel on it aloe vera and that's it i don't have to say oh it is a bottle because it has been made by da -da -da. no i'm literally just describing saying what i see that went a little bit off topic but I had to tell you guys that so if you see a trend state the trend with evidence to back it up obviously back up your ever back up your point with an evidence so what i mean by that is my example that i put here is that so again this is with enzyme activity and temperature so what i would say if they asked me to describe the graph i'd say initially as the temperature increases the rate of enzyme activity increases initially remember that initially so for an example at 10 degrees the rate of enzyme activity is i don't know 1.5 centimeters cubed per decimeter cubed um whereas at 30 degrees the rate of enzyme activity is four centimeters cubed uh per decimeters cubed you, you get what i mean so what i'm saying state your state your point and just back it up because you will get marks for just backing up your evidence, backing up your point, yeah. Again, if you see a decline or a decrease, state the decline or decrease. If you see fluctuations, state the fluctuation. If you see an increase initially, you see a decrease, then you see an increase, you see a decrease, state it, state it. If, if you are comparing two graphs and you see two line graphs and you see that one of the line graph is higher than higher if one of the line graph is higher than the other one say it say that one of the line graph is higher than the other one or the other one one of them has a steeper decline or something like that just say what you see honestly say what you see and you will get marks these are simple easy marks that i feel like some of us or you i mean i i mean i used to anyway but you know i learned i need to say what i see but i feel like these are easy marks that we tend to lose because we kind of overcomplicate the question and we just write too much again no explanation no nothing no explain just say what you see thank you guys for watching i hope you guys really enjoyed this and make sure to like and subscribe if you want more videos like this and see you in a next video so bye